we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. I wonder how many of the women who listen to Lum and Abner have to watch their weight, and how many of the men, too. Now, I suggest that you particular folks listen to this mighty carefully. In a recent weight-reducing test in Chicago, women actually lost an average of three pounds, four ounces in less than ten days. That sounds interesting, doesn't it? Well, here's how they did it. They used the Horlick weight control plan, which consists simply of drinking a glass full of Horlick's malted milk in place of a heavy, hard-to-digest lunch. Simple enough, but how safe and effective this plan is. Safe because Horlick's is an exceptionally well-balanced food, a good source of the minerals and vitamins essential for providing correct nourishment. And effective because it cuts down on a common cause of excess weight, too many calories. So there you are, all you overweight folks. There's the answer to your problem, the Horlick Weight Control Plan. You can get the necessary Horlick's malted milk from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. All the arrangements for Lum and Abner's new picture show, the Pine Ridge Planetarium, have been running very smoothly until yesterday when Squire Skimp propositioned the old fellows to take him in as a third partner. And when they refused, stated that he was going to open a picture show of his own, run them out of business. As we look in on our old friends today, we find them down at the Jotham Down store, very much worried over Squire's threats. Listen. Well, Abner, it's either let him in with us or he's going to open up a show of his own, and you know that won't do. Well, let him open one up. It'll be just as bad for him as it will for us. Yeah, but there ain't enough business here in Pine Ridge for two picture shows. He never would have thought about putting one in if it hadn't been for you flying off in the handle and getting him mad. I never flew it off the handle. I just said that we didn't want no third partner in the business, and I don't. Yeah, but you could have said it in a heap nicer way than you did. Telling him that if he's gonna if he's gonna have another partner, you wouldn't have him. Well, I wouldn't either. Yeah, but you can't come right out and say things like that to folks. You got to handle a feller like Squire Skimp with the gloves on. You mean if I'd have had on a pair of gloves, why it wouldn't have made him mad? No, no, that's just an expression. It means you've got to handle him easy, handle him with gloves on. Yeah, I'd love to handle him with a pair of boxing gloves on. I ain't got no use for him at all, Mom. Every time we've ever had any dealings with him while we took a skinning. Well, it ain't that I want to take him in as a partner. I ain't got no love for him myself. I but hate him to pieces. We'd have make a heap more money with him as a partner than we would if uh, putting him uh, him putting in a show again. Well, I don't know where we would or not. Well, there's just so much business here, and if he puts in a show too, uh, he's going to get half of it, and me and you'll get the other half. Me and you'll just get uh, one half between us, a, a fourth apiece. But if we take him in as a partner, why, we split it three ways. We'll get a third of these. Well, I don't know nothing about that, Mom, but I do know that I ain't going to stand for him being old partner with me and nothing. Well, you're just getting stubborn, have No, now, there ain't no use to argue with me now, Mom. I've got my head set. I'm not arguing with you, Abner. I'm just trying to reason with you. Here's a fellow that's had a lot of experience running picture shows and knows all about them. And we've got a chance to take him in as a partner, and if we don't, he's going to open up complication again. Looks like he's got us right where he wants us. Well, I don't care. Huh? I say I'm afraid Squire's got us right where he wants us. Where? Where what? What are you talking about? Where does he want us? I don't know. Right where we're at, I reckon. You mean he wants us here in a store? Oh, of course not. The store ain't got nothing to do with it. Well, that's where we're at. I know where we're at. Well, if he's got us where he wants us, well, it must be here in the store then. You don't know what I'm talking about, Abner. Oh, 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 yeah. He thinks we owe it to picture show, huh? No, I said he's got us where he wants us. I mean, he's got us to where we don't know which way to jump. Jump? Yeah, I don't know which way to turn. Well, now, which do you mean, turn or jump? Either one, Abner. It's all the same. You mean turning and jumping is all the same thing? Well, no, not ordinary, but in this case it is. He's got us to where we don't know what to do. Well, I ain't going to do nothing. I don't see how us jumping or turning, either one, is going to keep him from putting in a picture show if he's a mind to do it. Well, no, of course not. Well, what do you want to do it for, then? You can't scare me into jumping. Abner, you still don't know what I mean. I mean Squire's got our hands tied to where we can't do nothing else. Huh? 
Ain't no use looking at your hands. I don't mean that they're sure enough tight. Can't you understand nothing? Well, I thought you said that he had our hands tied. I did. Well, mine ain't. I know that. Yours ain't neither. Look at that. Oh, for goodness sake, Sam. You take everything I say literary. What I mean, Squire's got us where he wants to. He's got us to where we don't know which way to... Ju- our hands are... He's holding an axe over our head. Oh, my goodness, my goodness. What's the matter with... Sit down there. Sit down, for goodness sake. What did you say about an axe? I said he was holding an axe. Nothing. Just just forget about it. Now, if he's holding any axe over my head, I want to know about it. He ain't holding nothing over your head, so sit down. Well, why do you want to be starting such doors as that then for? Say one thing one minute and turn right around and say that you didn't mean it. Well, you get a body so mixed up, he don't know what he's saying half the time. Well, who wouldn't get mixed up with such talk as that? Saying my hands are tied. Like I wouldn't know it if it was. Anybody can tell when her hands are tied. When I say tied, Abner, I don't mean they're tied with a rope. Well, what I'm telling you, though, they ain't tied with nothing. I can see. Oh, my goodness. I started out a while ago to explain to you that Squire's got his right for... Her Squire is... Oh, I'll swan, Abner, if you don't try a body's patience. I forgot now what it was I was trying to explain to you. Well, it just looks to me like, Lum, the squire's got things worked around to where he'll get the best of us either way we decide. Well, I'll be dead blamed. Huh? That's just what I've been trying to say for the last ten minutes. Was that what you were trying to tell me? Why, of course it was. <laughs> I just wish you could have heard what all you were saying. Are you feeling all right, Lum? Uh, of course I'm feeling all right. Where'd you get out of here like that? Oh, nothing, nothing. But now, Lum... If I was you now, I wouldn't worry too much about this picture show and Squire Skin. Everything's going to work out all right now. Just, just don't worry about it. I ain't uh, worrying about there it. There comes the cuffs now, front there. You want me to tell him that you'd rather he wouldn't bother you now? Well, he's not going to bother me. Why would Dick bother me? Oh, nothing. Nothing but to... I, I want to see him about something private first. Well, all right. I'll step out of the store if you want to see no, him. No, no, that's all right. I'll just meet him up here at the front door. Yeah, I'll tell him something. Now, wait a minute, Dick. I want to talk to you. Yeah, sure. What's the matter, Edna? I, I, I just want to see you before you got back there with Lom. Uh, Dick, I, I'm just afraid that Lom's been worrying too much about this picture show. He's having spells. Having spells? Yeah, I, I believe his mind is a-wandering. He's sort of addled. You see, Squire Skimp come over here yesterday and tried to get us to take him in as a third partner in our picture show. And when we wouldn't do it, I just balked this flat. They refused to do it. And then he come out and made him mad. And he says now that he's going to open up a picture show here in a competition again. And I think Lum's just worried about it so much that it's just effective his reasoning. Well, I'll declare. And he, he was sitting back there a while ago. Appeared to be all right. And all at once, why, he got it in his head that Squire had our hands tied together and was trying to kill us with an axe. Well, for goodness sake, Edna. And now he appears to be back in his right mind again. It just sort of comes and goes, looks like. But uh, I thought I better tag you so that you could sort of quiet him down if he gets started on it again. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, let's go on back there. Well, howdy, Lom. Well, hello, Dick. Come on back. I want to talk to you. Yeah, uh, Dick's your friend, Lom. You know him, don't you, Dick Huddleston? Why, of course I know him. What's he on you anyway, Abner? Sit down, Dick. Yeah, thanks. How you feeling, Lom? Why, just only tolerably, Dick. Been worrying myself half crazy. That's what I want to talk to you about. Oh, now, Lom, now you're all right. Now, you just went worrying too much, you know. Uh, Squire Skimp's been trying to buy a third interest in our picture show and says if we don't sell it to him, he's going to open up another in here in Pine Ridge and competition to it. Oh, well, I wouldn't let that worry me, Lom. He's just bluffing. Just trying to force you to sell. Well, that's just the trouble about it. Can't tell where he's bluffing or not. He's got me to where I don't know which way to jump. Got our hands tied, looks like. Hey, okay, go take that. Change the subject. You don't want to talk about something else. Quick, sort of holding an axe over her head. Oh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Admiral, what are you whispering about? What's the matter uh, with you? Uh, anyway? Nothing. That's not a thing, now, now. Don't get excited, now. Just, well, just sit I down. I can't now. talk to Dick, and you over there whispering in his ear all the time. Uh, what would you do, Dick, if you was us? Why, he won't go through with it long. Just let him pop his whip. Uh-huh. In the first place, where would he put it? There's not another vacant building in town that he could rent. No, that's right. I don't believe there are. Not a thing. 
And if he puts up a new one, why, it'd be a couple of months anyway before he could get it ready. That's a big job putting up a theater building. Grannies, I hadn't thought about that. Why, sure. You fellas just sit tight now and let him do the worrying. Well, sir, I believe you're just right about it, Dick. I hadn't yeah. thought about that, having to put in a new building and all. Why, sure he'll have to. <laughs> he couldn't put in one if he wanted to, could he? Well, no, I don't believe he's got the money left. I don't believe there's a thing in the world to it. Well, in the first place, as long there wouldn't be any point neither in taking him in as a partner. Just a minute, Dick. I believe that was our ring, man. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> uh-huh. right. Hello? This is him talking. You don't know what he's doing right now. Who? Oh, howdy, Mose. <laughs> Mose Moose. Well. <laughs> How's that, Mose? I'm just a... What was it? Well, what's the reason you came? Oh, it can't be half funny, Sam. Well, here now, I done made a deal yeah. with you, firm. That is, up till today. Why, you said the lodge would be closed all summer and it wouldn't have no use for them chairs. I bet he don't know what he's saying about it. Squire Skimp. Well, what's he renting the whole lodge hall for? Huh? Oh, my goodness. I granny Mo's Mook says they've rented them chairs and lodge hall and all to Squire Skim. Says he's going to put in a moving picture show in over there. Well, it looks like that axe that was hanging over Lumman Abner's head is about to drop. Did you know that the state of your children's teeth has a large bearing upon their health? Every dentist will tell you that this is an actual fact. So you can see how important it is that you look after their teeth as carefully as you can. There are two things to remember on the care of the teeth. One, they should receive regular attention. And two, the children's diet should contain elements essential for their correct development. The first, you can get by taking your youngsters to the dentist regularly and following his advice. There is no substitute for that. The second, the essential elements including minerals and vitamins are to be found in Horlick's malted milk. Just remember these two things, and you'll have little to worry about your children's teeth. You can get the Horlick malted milk from your druggist in two flavors the children love, natural and chocolate. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick's, who now bid you all good night and good health.